This is indeed the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being with us on this uh, beautiful opportunity to worship on this Easter Sunday here at St. John's Lutheran Church in downtown Des Moines, Iowa. Praising God for rolling away the stone. Praising God for bringing a new dawn out of the darkness. Praising God for bringing life out of death itself. Let's stand, please, wherever you are, whatever your situation, if you are able to stand, and I invite you to join together in our Easter call to worship. This is the good news. The grave is empty. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. This is the good news. The love of God, stronger than death, lifts us up. Hallelujah. This is the good news. The risen Christ is with us in homes and hospitals, with the sick and the suffering, with those who serve and those in sorrow. The risen Lord is among us. Hallelujah. This is the good news. The risen Christ is ahead of us, calling us into a future held in the life-giving love of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let us sing together.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our resurrection. And for, by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading on this Easter Sunday is from Isaiah, the 25th chapter, verses 6 through 9. More than 700 years before Christ, the prophet Isaiah proclaims the good news of God's salvation, and he calls all people to rejoice. God will make a rich feast for all people. God will wipe the tears from their eyes. And most importantly, God will destroy death itself. People of God, listen for the word of the Lord. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich foods filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God.
The reading for today is from Romans chapter 6, verses 3 through 11. We were incorporated into the death of Jesus Christ in baptism, and so we were liberated from the dominion of sin. We also anticipate that we will be incorporated into the resurrection of Christ, and so be liberated from the hold death has over our mortal bodies. People of God, listen to the word of the Lord. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Jesus was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so too we might in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The, lo the death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So that you must consider yourself dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Word of God, word of life. According to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the, term, the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. 
Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them, that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Would you please join me in prayer? Good morning, Lord, and thank you for last Friday, for making it against all odds good we are so grateful, Lord, for today and tomorrow and forever because of your love for us, which we now know cannot be something that is separated from us, not even by death. We pray for your presence with each and every one of us. We give you thanks for inviting us to be a part of what you have in store in this abundant and hope-filled life which you offer through the risen Jesus Christ. We praise your holy name on this Easter day. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, on this glorious Easter morning, I wish you grace and I wish you peace. From God our Father and our risen Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Indeed. Amen. It is said to be a true story that at the death of the Russian leader, Nikita Khrushchev, back in 1971, the Communist Party, which had cast Mr. Khrushchev aside, was very uncomfortable with the idea of burying his body on what was then Soviet soil. First, they called the President of the United States, Richard Nixon, and asked if the U.S. would take Khrushchev's corpse Nixon had his own troubles at the time, and he declined. And then the Soviet leaders tried Golda Meir, Prime Minister of Israel. Mrs. Meir agreed, but she added this. She said, I must warn you, though, this country throughout history has had the world's highest rate of resurrections. <laughs> Thanks be to God for that. The time was early, early Sunday morning, just before dawn, in what some say is the darkest part of the night. The setting was a garden, not too far from the place where Jesus had been so cruelly crucified. In that garden was a tomb. It had never been used until these last few days, freshly carved out of the side of a hill. Everything was quiet, but there was one thing out of place that very large stone which had been packed into the entrance to seal the entrance of that tomb was now alongside of where it had been. A grieving, lonely, anguished woman made her way to that spot in the silence and darkness of the end of the night. She came with spices to anoint the body and suddenly her heavy heart sunk even further. Oh, no. Oh, no. The stone was rolled away. The tomb appeared to be empty. His body wasn't there. 
They had tortured him enough when he was alive. Did they have to come and desecrate his body even after his death too? Are they so afraid of him that they seized his dead body also? Or did grave robbers perhaps come thinking that there was something of value to steal? Oh, this was terrible. She rushed to tell his disciples, but they didn't have any answers. They came back to the tomb, but they were as mystified as she. We can only imagine Mary's feelings as she stood there weeping outside of the tomb. We don't know a whole lot about this Mary Magdalene, but we've come to believe that she had been living a a challenged existence when along had come this man, this marvelous miracle-working man named Jesus who had, who had picked her life up out of despair. She had become the most devoted disciple imaginable. He had made her feel loved and valued, and she had fully embraced his teachings about the kingdom of God. She knew of the grace and love of God, and she called this Jesus her Lord and Master, and then tragedy had struck. Mob behavior. Selfish, jealous people couldn't stand a success story and came after Jesus with a vengeance. It had all happened so quickly. One day there she was sitting at his feet, looking into his very loving eyes and learning about the mysteries and the greatness of the kingdom of God. And the next day there she is sobbing after his limp, dead body, standing next to Jesus' own mother, another Mary as his body was taken down from where his flesh had been posted to the wooden cross beams wrapped up and placed inside this tomb. She thought that the worst possible thing ever that could have happened had happened. But now this, now she was truly alone with her grief because she didn't even have his body to weep over and to minister to. She couldn't believe it. She had to look again, so she bent over and she looked into the tomb and suddenly, through her tears, two beings, yes, two angels actually dressed in white, sitting there where Jesus' body had been. Shh, woman, why are you weeping? She was probably so surprised, she just had this knee-jerk response and answered the question, they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. Suddenly she was aware that another man stood there. He spoke to her gently. Woman, why are you weeping? Whom do you seek? She thought he was the gardener. She answered in her deep anguish, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, that I may reclaim his body. And here is where the story takes such a surprise twist. I wonder if in the shadows of that dark tomb, I wonder if a smile perhaps came across the face of that one whom she supposed to be the gardener. Have you ever stopped to think about Jesus at this moment? What fun it must have been. Remember, it was the dawn of the third day. He had not been alive for long, maybe even just moments. And now he was about to bring his great new resurrection life into the life of this, his dear friend. He could have played a game for a while, but he was much too kind. So he knew that all he had to do to get the resurrection message across was to call her name. And so this stranger called out softly to her, Mary, and he was now no longer a stranger. The longest, darkest night of her life now gave way to a great breaking of the dawn. This was Jesus. He had gotten up indeed from the dead her Lord, the Jesus who had made a new person out of Mary Magdalene. Suddenly, her heart beat faster. She felt exhilarated. She impulsively reached out for him, but Jesus stopped her. He had not yet ascended to the Father. That's okay. She was content to hold him in her heart. And that's exactly what she did. 
And Jesus told her then to go and to tell. And sure enough, she went and she told, I have seen the Lord. He is alive. Jesus has arisen. He is alive. That is the beginning of the story of Easter. The greatest and the most wonderful and life-changing and life-giving event in all of history. And we are called today, not just simply to remember that day, not just simply even to remember that event, but rather we are called to live in the glory, to live in the power, to live in the impact of the resurrection of Jesus and all that it brings. The resurrection of Jesus has allowed us to put your brokenness and mine behind once and for all because all who believe, all who believe in this business of the death and resurrection of Jesus as the Messiah, as the Son of God, all who believe and are baptized into that death and that resurrection of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit in and through God's word and water will be saved. And again, as the Apostle Paul declares it from Romans chapter 10, that if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hmm. Now, lest the church of the risen Christ be criticized or somehow viewed as living in denial about the reality of the ongoing challenges and, and reality of imperfections, you know, some kind of a fantasy world of the brokenness that truly does exist in this world and in our lives. Easter, I think, is actually a really, really good day to set that record straight. The reality of it is, we know, that life, generally speaking, tends to be anything but honky-dory. I don't know when is the last time you heard that phrase, particularly on an Easter Sunday. Do we say honky-dory in Iowa? Yeah. Life is anything but, right? Yes, we certainly, we have those moments, and I hope that you have those days. I hope you even have weeks, entire weeks full of, of life, abundant life, full of kicks and giggles and charm and happiness and good stuff for sure. But the fact remains, and we all know this, that until Jesus Christ returns once again in all of his resurrection glory, the fact remains that darkness does continue. Darkness continues to be a thing, a real thing in this world and in our lives. We know that. The war against sin, death, and the power of the devil, yes, has been won by the victorious God Almighty in and through Jesus Christ. But Jesus left for us the great commission, the great commandment, we call it. Jesus left and bestowed upon us the Holy Spirit of the living God. We are now blessed and we are gifted by his empowerment to keep on keeping on in this life and in this world, not in a void of darkness, but rather empowered by his light in and through today's darkness with that promise of his love and of his grace and of his ultimate return. And so upon reflection, it's important for us to note today that this isn't just some historical look back, a snapshot of days gone by, a throwback Jersey going back to days of old somehow, which means that Mary Magdalene is not the only one who has come to Easter morning in need, perhaps, of a new dawn. We all know that she is not the only one who understands anguish or knows despair or who struggles with fear. And this is why the open tomb of Jesus and his message of love and care and good news is just as relevant on April 4th in the 2021st year of our Lord 
as it was on that first Easter. There is not a person alive who cannot in some way, shape, or form relate to what Mary felt like when she was standing, weeping, outside of that empty tomb, peering into the darkness with that sense of hopelessness and helplessness. And the reality of the gospel of Jesus Christ is that we cannot even have appreciation for or really understanding of the Easter message unless we come to understand first that that first Easter was in fact born out of total, absolute, devastating darkness. And so, what a privilege indeed it is for you and for me to come together today on this Easter in awe, in absolute awe of the open tomb this morning, just as Mary did, perhaps even due to life's circumstances, perhaps even some of you might also have tear-swollen eyes today, just as Mary did. And because of the dark shadows of that pre-dawn darkness that makes up a part of our lives in this world, it may be hard at first, given those circumstances, it might be hard at first today for you to, to even recognize that it is not some stranger that approaches you. It is not the gardener who stands very near to you now, but rather that same very dear friend and Savior who softly asks you, just as he did Mary, woman, why are you weeping? Or sir, why are you in such despair? Or child, why are you so sad or fearful? And then just as with Mary, he will listen to your story. He will hear you as if he didn't know it all, all along. And then we see what happens next. Now, he whispers your name. He knows your name. And you realize that it is indeed him, that he is not dead, he is alive, and he loves you so very, very much that it explains that question of why he chose to not save himself from the cross. It explains why he did what he did all the way to hell and back. Because God loves you. God loves the world so much that he gave his son so that you and all who believe would experience how night turns into dawn and that you and all who believe in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. There was a Christian gentleman who lived some years ago by the name of William Sangster. He was stricken with a disease that caused a progressive muscular degeneration. His muscles were gradually wasting away and his voice soon failed him and after a while, the muscles in his throat wouldn't even function well enough for him to speak or to swallow. It was Easter morning, just a few weeks, it turns out, before his death. He wrote a note, and he handed it to his daughter with tears in his eyes and a smile on his face. And the note read, It is terrible to wake up on Easter morning and have no voice with which to shout out, He is risen. But how much more terrible it would be to have a voice and not have anything to shout. Happy Easter. Amen.
the gift of faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God of the Father, God from God, light from right, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and see at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The response to the prayers will be, Your mercy is great. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Praise to you for the power revealed in the resurrection. Fill your church with the power of your love that is stronger than death. Send us to tell the good news wherever death holds sway. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for your life at work in the resurrection. Fill all creation with your life. Bring it to blossom and flourish Use it to remind us of your persistent grace. Cultivate our care for what you have made. Hear us, O God. 
your mercy is great. Praise to you for the hope of the resurrection. Fill all in need with hope. Those who are afraid or confused, those who are sick or suffering, especially from COVID, and for all that we name before you. For H. Rachel Almley for upcoming surgery. For Gary and Delane Marker Sr. as he recovers from COVID. For Genevieve, granddaughter of Nancy Budrovich, and those we name in our hearts. For Bria. Assure them of your healing presence. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praised you for the joy of your resurrection. Fill this assembly of St. John's with joy as we are called to be your beloved in baptism. Multiply that joy so that we may share it at home, at work, in our community. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praised you for the faithfulness revealed in the resurrection. Fill us with trust that we join with all the saints who have died before us, especially Donna Koopa, Sister of Barbara John, and others that we name in our hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Please be seated. Welcome this Easter morning to St. John's Lutheran Church in the city for good in Des Moines, Iowa. This morning we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. If we were in this beautiful sanctuary for worship, we would now be sharing an Easter greeting with each other. I invite you to take a moment to share a greeting with your family and throughout the week with your community. We are so thankful for the gift, many gifts to the Feed the Hungry Lenten Appeal that has been blessed with 174 food items and financial gifts of $5,350. Your gifts of food and money will be multiplied in feeding many people who are hungry through DMARC, Meals from the Heartland, and the ELCA World Hunger Campaign. Let's give our best effort for a final push at St. John's this week to bless this campaign with even more gifts for the good of our community. We hope that you have opened and read through the important mailing from St. John's that you have received. In the mailing, you will find a booklet and information and instructions regarding the congregational assessment tool. This survey is important in assessing the congregation's mission and ministry. You will be able to complete the survey beginning Tuesday by clicking the link, which will be embedded in an email you will receive that day. It is important that we have your email address for this survey. For those who receive electronic mailings from the church, that means we have your email address. For those who do not receive our electronic communications, that means we do not have your email address. Would you please contact the church office with that information that we may include you in this electronic survey. We are aware that this is a challenging time with the COVID pandemic. 
as the evidence indicates that the virus continues to spread in our area. The leadership of the church continues to move carefully with the advice of a public health epidemiologist. She advises, even if you are fully vaccinated, that wearing a mask and maintaining a physical distance are critical to help control the pandemic. In the meantime, we have several ways that you can have time at St. John's for prayer and worship, in addition to the virtual broadcast that you are participating in for Easter. First, we invite individuals or family bubble units to pray in the chapel of St. John's. Please call the church office to schedule your visit. There are guidelines and the staff will share them with you. As we did this morning, second, we will be offering Holy Communion the first and third Sundays of the month at 8.30 a.m. via FM transmitter in your cars in the west parking lot of the church. After the gathering, we encourage you to return home for virtual worship of the Sunday Liturgy on YouTube. Our publications available by email and on the website provide details of the programs and describes how you may connect with our ministry. Monday through Friday, the Reflection Connection is posted on the YouTube channel with meditation and prayer led by staff and others associated with our ministry. And as always, we are so blessed by your generosity. We are most grateful for your gifts that support the ministry and mission of St. John's. There is information about how to give an offering at the end of this broadcast or on the church website.
Please stand. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. <laughs> Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. 
Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.